16, this is our main text we've been using for a series that we've been doing now for several weeks, battling our way through the pandemic, amen, and we are victorious, praise the Lord, hallelujah, everybody say COVID-19 is under our feet, hallelujah, Let's go ahead and declare any sickness, any plague is under my feet, any disease is under my feet because Jesus has already conquered the devil and anything that would be cause or uh, of sin or disease, hallelujah, he's defeated the devil. And so we're talking about moving forward through the madness. And Psalm 18, verse 28 says, For thou will light my candle. Holly, everybody needs their candle lit. That means your spirit. Your candle is your spirit, man. And uh, you can go through life and never get your candle lit. Did you know that? Woo! That means you got lit once, you can get lit again. So thou will light my candle. The Lord, my God, will enlighten my darkness. Hallelujah. But when you get born again, that's a good start because now you came out of darkness and into light. Did you know that the kingdom of God is the kingdom of light? Colossians 1 says you've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. And then when you get in the kingdom, that kingdom is the kingdom of light and truth is light. So that's why the Bible says in 1 John, you walk in the light. You walk in the truth. Truth is light. And the more truth you know, what happens? the more light that you walk in. Hallelujah. And so we're not talking about just physical light. We're talking about spiritual light. Spiritual light has to do with your understanding, your eye, the eyes of your heart, understanding more and learning more, knowing more. And it affects how you live and how you walk. So the Lord will enlighten our darkness. Verse 29, now watch this. For by you I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over a wall. In other words, these are things you don't just, uh, you know, if you're in a battle, you don't normally just run, run through a troop. Uh, you don't, you know, when it comes to leaping over a wall or going over a wall, that is symbolic because sometimes, most of the times, a lot of people, they just keep hitting the wall and uh, they, you, know, you could call it the fence. And so we were talking about the children of Israel, using them as an example. God was leading them out of Egypt and was bringing them. Everybody say he was bringing them. God had a plan and he's taking them into the promised land. And he's got to get them from where they are. And God knows that the army is right, the, the enemy is fast behind and approaching. So guess what God's going to do? God's got a plan to take out the enemy. But now the Israelites don't know that God's planning on taking out the enemy, that they'll never see him again. So he's got to get them to a place. So God's smart enough to take you through a place that when the enemy tries to follow, he's done for. God knows how to get you through a victory to where now once you pass through that, you'll never have to deal with him in that area again in your life. Hallelujah. That's called you got the stake down and you're moving on. Praise the Lord. So God brings them to the Red Sea. And they didn't exactly pass the test right there, you might say. And so we know the story. God ends up having to split the Red Sea and takes them across. But uh, we'll look at that at the end of the message today. But what I wanted to say is everybody encounters the dead, the Red Seas, the walls of life, the fences of life. God, you feel like God's leading you to do something. And you get to that point or you take a step and you feel like you just kind of hit a wall. Everything shuts down. You, God, you're trying to obey God. The finances stop. Uh, you know, you're just trying to, where's, when am I going to get my breakthrough? And, and you need to know the Lord is your breakthrough. He's the one that gets you over the wall. By my God, I will leap over a wall. With God, all things are possible. With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. But what's the key to all things possible? You have to believe. Believing is the key. And so we're not deviating from that because you're still going to have to believe God. When, it, when you hit the wall, it's not time to stop believing. Matter of fact, I was thinking recently about that scripture in Proverbs that says, if you faint in the day of adversity, there wasn't much to you in the first place. You're, there, you didn't have much strength. So listen, if you start crumbling in adversity, if you start whining and complaining when you hit the wall, uh, you need to back up and dig back in and refortify yourself and move forward. It's because it's going to take that in order for you to move forward. You're going to have to get lit. I said you're going to have to get lit if you want to move forward. So that's what we're talking about. And so everybody hits the proverbial, the proverbial wall. And so you have to remember when you hit the wall, when it looks like you've stopped on the outside, spiritual progress is the most important progress there is. What does that mean? Spiritual progress means you're doing things spiritually like just reading the word, confessing the word, you're praying. And while you're doing those things, 
Angels are working? Because the Bible says, listen, I mean, we got all kinds of spiritual help. The name of the Lord, I mean, all these things. The sword of the Spirit, which is the word. It's the sword of the Spirit. He didn't say the word of God is the sword of the natural. He said it's the sword of the Spirit, and it's to be in your mouth. So when you're speaking, you're praying. God says, I hear you when you pray, and I'll, I'll reward you openly. His ears are attending to the prayers of the righteous. So there's a lot of things as we're doing those things, we don't begin to see something changing automatically, but God is working behind the scenes. He's doing some good things, right? So keep in mind, spiritual activity is the most important activity. Never let negative circumstances rob you of specifically your contentment. Remember we used Paul as an example? He said, I've learned how to be abound and I've learned how to be abased. In everything, in any situation, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So when you hit the wall and you feel like quitting, giving up, throwing in the towel, you got to say, you know what? There's something to do here. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He will get me. He will move me. He'll get me everything that I need so I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. And so you don't let that rob you of your contentment. You don't, and, and here's even more important, you don't let it rob you of your vision. When you lose vision, if you lose where you're going, if it got so dark you can't see, you need to get back in the, you need to get back in the incubator. You need to get back in to where God can speak to your heart. You can hear from heaven. We talked about that Wednesday night. You gotta take if you go back and watch the message Wednesday night. We we're talking about there's times when you gotta just pull aside and make time. Call upon the name of the Lord. That doesn't mean you just shout when you're in trouble. You call upon the name of the Lord. You waiting on him, and you shall be saved. So you might want to watch that, all right? But also, here's the thing. Just don't let those things keep you from doing the word. Everybody say, doing the word. The Bible, all, through, all the way through from Old Testament through the New Testament, the doer of the word will be blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So keep that in mind. Now, so faith is believing. Faith is an attitude. It's action. So we, so we don't leave faith behind with what we're talking about. Don't lose your joy. We talked about that. Don't lose your joy. You got to smile while you endure. That's easier said than done. Amen. When, when you got slammed by the hail in the last few days, well, you just got to smile and say, I'm going to get something better. It's going to look better than it ever was before. Amen. And God's going to provide. Happiness is a temporary emotion. Joy is an eternal condition based on the cross. I said happiness is just a little short emotion. Anybody ever been happy before? A temporary emotion. Well, I just want to be happy. All right. Well, you can get real happy. You know, you, something can happen. Somebody can help you, so, you know, you just get real happy, but it's just a temporary emotion. But joy, everybody say joy. Joy is, the, is different from happiness. Joy is an eternal condition based on what Jesus did at the cross. That's why Jesus said in John 16, 33, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to stress over it. So in moving through the madness or moving through the darkness, that's a good way to put it. I was thinking about that. Lord, okay, well, not just, sometimes madness is just chaos. It's just darkness. How do we keep moving through the darkness? Number one, we said praising God is one of the most effective ways to get moving on. You might not see it in the beginning, but it's going to open up things. So praising God. I spent about four weeks talking about that a uh, lot longer than I thought I was going to to get it all out, but uh, just keep in mind, the devil wants to stop your progress, and he does that by silencing your praise. If he can silence you or get you complaining, and that's specific, again, if you go back and read 1 Corinthians 10, it's crazy, but complaining is in a, is in a long list of murderers. I mean, it's a crazy list of people you, you think, and complaining is in that list? With rebellious and murderers and all kind of crazy, you know, sin things that we might think is should, but he puts complaining in that list. And he says, don't you complain like they did, and snakes coming in the camp. So you got to watch out for complaining. Man, it's serious business. All right, so I got to get into number two this morning, and, uh, and I believe maybe I can get this done here in a couple of messages, services, but this is real important. Man, I've been meditating on this, and, and, I, and it keeps growing in me. But the second key, if you're going to move forward through the madness, through the chaos, through the darkness, is you're going to have to be fully persuaded. You're going to have to have some confidence. Amen. And I'm thinking about another word. Uh, some people might like, I, I like the word conviction. I, I'm, and when I say conviction, I'm, compare, I'm comparing conviction with 
Because conviction makes it a little stronger. Not everybody's going to walk have the same conviction that you have. You know what I'm saying? But that, that's the same way of saying not everybody's going to be as persuaded as you are. The Bible talks about faith being a full persuasion, a firm persuasion. So if you're going to move forward, you're going to have to be fully persuaded. This is where people make mistakes in their faith walk when they try to operate on somebody else's conviction. Somebody else's persuasion. I was trying to think, okay, Lord, I need an illustration for this. I was thinking, how many of you like 007, James Bond movies? You know, or uh, what's a Mission Impossible? We saw that one on the other night. It was, they were showing that old, I mean the old one. I mean, I was like, man, look at Tom, Tom Cruise. He looks like he's about 15. <laughs> anyway, but how many of you like those movies, those, you know, Jason Bourne, you know? Anyway, any of those spy movies like that, somebody's always got to have an access code. They got to have a thumbprint or an eyeball, you know, they're trying to, <laughs> you know, they've got to, they're, they're, they've got to have some way of accessing the secret passage or getting through somewhere. And really, that's what it's like. Faith is like that, or your conviction, your persuasion is like that. You can't operate on somebody else's conviction. You, you know, if you, don't, if you don't get the right thumbprint in the James Bond movie, you're in trouble. You're stuck. I mean, it, it, maybe the timer's on, and they're going, okay, and it's getting down to the wire, and sweat's dripping, you know, and we, you know, and, and you got to have the right stuff. You know what I'm saying? And so... There are people that God has, let me give you some examples. There's people that God has told. I, I mean, I've heard, I know one particular, several ministers. They, God specifically told them, you, do not borrow money. I mean, it's, it's, it's clear. They, God's told him, do not, God didn't tell me not to borrow money. He might, now, he, I respect that. If he, if he told them, you don't borrow money, he has never told me, don't borrow money. You know what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. We'll get that up later. <laughs> anyway, everybody say, don't borrow. So, no, don't say that. Uh, so think about that. So what God tells one person doesn't mean that he's going to tell you the same thing or you're supposed to do the same thing. Amen. You know, the Lord told, uh, I mean, you, you know, if you're going to borrow some things, let me just say something about borrowing. You, you know, there's good borrowing. There's good debt and there's bad debt. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right. But God never told me not to. Matter of fact, we purchased all this property borrowing. But the reason we borrowed it is because people were renting, you know, from the property. To, and it was basically what, what the income was coming. It was paying for the bank for the property. So to me, that's smart. I mean, that's just the wisdom of God, all right? If you're going to pay the bank for borrowing the money, why not use the people's money that are paying for it to pay the bank back? You know what I'm saying? I mean, so, so there's some good. And then now if, you know, if it's just over your head and way too much, then then, uh, you know, that's different. Let me give you another example. You know, uh, sometimes as we're walking, we hear stories. You know, one year, years ago, Don and I, uh, we had it in our heart to sew a van. We had a van. And we got four kids. I mean, it's not easy getting four kids. You know, you got six people trying to get in one vehicle. And the Lord dealt with us to give our van away to a couple. They didn't even come to the church. They were involved in our life. I think they were, they were actually uh, accountants. They were our accountants. And, uh, Back in the day, and so, uh, but they had five kids, and uh, we just got it in our heart. You know what? We were praying about it. We were, of course, we started believing God. I think we just want, we were believing for something new, something different. So we're praying about it. So while we're praying about a new vehicle, God starts dealing with us to give away the one we have, and we actually owed about twenty five hundred dollars. I think we still owed money on the van. So I'm thinking, okay, so we're gonna sell our van, and we're still making payments on it. But the Lord dealt with us to do that. And you know what? We did it with joy. We were glad to do it. And uh, you know what? I, I, we, we haven't really lacked for cars and prob, you know, in that area just, you know, because it's just like seed. And so God helps you and he blesses you. So that doesn't, but you know, uh, just because God told us to do it doesn't mean you're supposed to go out and do it. You following what I'm saying? It's important that we have our own relationship with God. That's called knowing God. This, that's why this area being fully persuaded, moving forward, whatever you're doing in life becomes so important. I don't, if it's if, if in the area of healing, you got to be fully persuaded it's God's will for you to be healed. You got to be fully persuaded it's God's will for you to prosper. You got to be fully persuaded that God has a plan for your life. You got to be fully persuaded that God hears you when you pray. You got to be, you got, you understand? 
That's what faith is. It is a firm persuasion, but I like the word conviction because you can't operate on somebody else's conviction. I'm even thinking about the, with all the, the churches open up. You know, there's a wide gamut of, of uh, size of churches across the country. And I, I know I've got Rhema graduates, Rhema friends, and you've got some that have opened up. I know some, some, I know some churches that still aren't even opening up. Big churches, even after president said churches are essential. But the reason they're not opening is because they want to make sure that everybody's safe. But, you know, when I started, when I said we're going to have church, I had it in my heart. You know, I just said, it's time for us to go. I'm not waiting on anybody else. I'm not waiting on, thank God the governor did when he did because I, I already announced it on Sunday and he changed it on Tuesday. He said, we're open. I said, "Woo!" But it was in my heart. You know, just taking a step, opening up the children's ministry. And we're still doing, but you know, but there's a wide, and, and, but then you get, you, you see things on Facebook and you got some, some Christians are knocking, you shouldn't be open in churches or you should be open, you're not open, you should be open. And I'm like, listen, every, even as a pastor, as a leader, you got to operate out of your own heart. You're the one giving an account to God for what you have and you don't let anybody else push you or tell, well, you should. Well, you know what? I don't have your conviction. If you don't have my conviction, you just keep everybody home. You keep doing what you're doing. Do you understand that's how we operate? you got to live out of your heart. That's Proverbs 4. Guard your heart. Out of it flow the issues of life. Those are your persuasions. Those are your convictions. And then you're responsible for those things. And God responds to those things. Does that make sense? You know, uh, God lets you ride on people's coattails for a little while, but you can't keep living life on other people's experiences. You know, when you're first getting born again, and you're first learning, and you're young in the Lord, God will let you ride on other people's faith. It's like that with your kids. But there comes a point when your own kids have to find their relationship with God. They've got to begin to operate on their own faith. They've got to begin to live out their own persuasion, their own convictions. And that's what they do. They all live out of their own convictions. Hallelujah. And if you start trying to live your Christian life on somebody else's persuasion or conviction, you're just, it's just, and, and then they wonder, why, aren't, why don't I get the results they have? Because you don't have the convictions they have. You haven't done what they did to get the convictions that they have. Now, that, I'll get back to that here in a minute. Did you catch that one? I said, some people don't want to do what the other people did to get the persuasion that they had, and that's why they got the results that they have. But then they want to go, well, I just think that's you. And then they want to complain or they want to say, well, it must not work. It don't work for me. No, you tried the word and the word tried you and you failed. I'm feeling a little cocky this morning, you know, just bold here. I'm just... Because people get so confused about what faith is. And if you don't get anything else, it's a substance. And when you got substance, you got confidence. I said, you got confidence. Are you following me? Your kids have to learn to have confidence in God for themselves. You'll never be able to fulfill God's plan for your life until you're confident of when he's speaking to you. And when I say speaking to you, I'm not talking about you heard a voice. Just on the inside, you have a conviction. You have a no-so. That's, that's another word for it. I got a no-so. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever had a no-so on the inside? And that no-so could be a leading of the Spirit. I'm supposed to buy that. I'm not supposed to buy that. You got a no-so. Everybody else is getting it. And you got a no-so that says, no, you don't do it. So where'd that come from? That's, that's the relationship that you have. That's the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Who knows? You know, years ago, we purchased, we purchased, we purchased all of our warehouse property. Man, listen, what I'm talking about your relationship with God, that conviction, that persuasion, just in your walk with God grows. I said it grows. You're, in other words, it takes time. Everybody say time. You know, like with any, any relationship, it can grow and it can develop over time. So because you've been walking with God and you've experienced his leadings and following, and that's what, that's what happened. We're going to come to Abraham in just a minute. That's what happened to Abraham. You understand, Abraham's been walking with God for a while. Well, you've been walking with God for a while. So here I am walking with God. I go to Rama. We come back. We start the church. After a few years, well, about 10 years down the road after we've got the church going, I've been pursuing some, you know, I'm still trying to find the building. Where are we going to, you know, we're in this warehouse. Well, one day I'm passing by, you know, we start talking. Well, we start, I had favor with the owner of all this property. Always had favor with him. 
Let me give you some, a little bit of advice. If you ever find favor, favor, keep riding it until the Lord tells you something different. Where there's favor, there might be more. Sometimes it's a relationship. And so we always had favor with the owner of this property. He said he even offered to, you know, build the shell and let us finish it out. When we got to a point, I, st- I, was, I had it in my heart to buy all of it. And so at first, we tried something and it failed through. We had some issues come up. Anyway, all bailed out. Well, we started moving with it again a few years later. Now, we're talking about, listen now, listen, listen. We're talking about $1.7 million. He said, Pastor, how much you have in the bank? Zero. (laughs) Now, watch what happens. I'm coming from home to work. I used to come come up upland, and this felt, because what happened was, the guy was kind of, the owner was kind of in and out. He he wasn't really, he wasn't really, I didn't sure we had the persuasion yet on his end. He's kind of in and he's kind of out. Well, all of a sudden, I'm coming to work, and I see this for sale sign come up on this 65 acres right here. We called on it, checked on it. Man, $240,000 for 65 acres. I thought, man, that's a steal. I just like on the inside, I'm like, man, we got we, we to gotta figure out how to do this. So, you know, we started pursuing that. Well, at the same time, well, what am I going to do about this? Because I don't know if this guy's going to bail or not. Are we going to? So, you know what? Just something on the inside just says, Let's go for it all. Let's go. Now, I didn't let the left hand know what the right hand was doing. So, you got to, now you, it's, when I look back, it's just crazy. I mean, you just think God is working. You, you talk about God moving on our behalf as a church, as a ministry. So, the owner, the, 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 the farmer who owns the 65 acres, he has 40 acres. His sister owns 25 acres. She's sick. She needs to sell the 25 now. So, I start, okay, Lord, I'm praying, wisdom, wisdom. I have Bracken Christian, I have my Bracken Christian Ministries, 501c3, my own Bracken, so I went to some of the leaders in the church. I said, hey, we need to buy this 25 acres. So, I raised enough money within some of the leaders in the church to purchase that 25 acres in Bracken Christian Ministries, in that name, get that 25 acres. The farmer carried the note for his 40 acres. So we're just going to pay him. So the bank don't know what we're doing. (laughs) So now I'm working with him. So now I got the bank and the owner of this property working on this property. And and the bank can only do so much. So the owner of this property is going to carry the extra hundred and something thousand that we need to just totally get it all. And you know what? It just step by step by step by step. One step at a time. We started in like May and finished the process in October. By the time, and then so it worked out, we finally borrowed enough, paid off the guy who owned the money, and we got, and so now we're about to pay this land off, praise the Lord. Anyway, but then once we got the 25 acres all into one deal, and we just donated that back, the, we deeded out of Bracken Christian Ministries back into the church, so the church owns all the property. Praise the Lord. How do I get up on that? I'm talking about, you, you have that something on the inside, and you're, and you're looking at 1.7 million, almost 2 million total for all of it, and you're just going, ha, ha, ha. Where does that come from? It's not because you got something in the bank, in the natural. It's got, you got something on the end, somebody on the inside that says, I can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ever ask or even think. According to the power that's at work in you, there's that persuasion you get going on. Hallelujah. So, that takes building your relationship with God. It takes some time. Listen, now I'm convinced the most dangerous people in the world are the ones who think they're hearing from God and they're not. There's a lot of people who think they're hearing from God. Well, the Lord said, Ooh, that, I'm going to check that right there. Well, give me some scriptures. You got some, what, what kind of foundational you got to stand on with that, the Lord said? Well, brother, the Lord said, my assignment's up. Okay, well, what, anyway, I better stop right there. Okay. Let's look at Abraham just a minute. i got to wrap this up. So moving forward, everybody say moving forward. That's what we're talking about. Going over is a result of being fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. How many of you are, listen, how many of you are fully persuaded God wants you to be prosperous and successful? You say, well, how does it start? Abraham's blessing. Abraham's blessing. (laughs) I was thinking about that the other day. I just thought, Abraham's blessing. You don't earn it. You know, I was just reading something really cool. Y'all want to hear just a little side, side journey here? You know, when the Bible says in Romans chapter 4 that it says, you know, 
that if a, if a fellow works for his salary and he gets paid, it, it's not a gift if he, if he works for it and he gets, he gets his paycheck, right? It's not a gift. I mean, he, he's expecting that. But to the one who receives the gifts but doesn't work for it, it's counted to him as righteousness. I like one particular translation. It's called the Cotton Patch Translation. It says, basically, it says, when, when you, in other words, it's saying, because you, you chose to believe, you, because you said, I believe, because you got in faith about it, that's the reason you get it. God counts, God considers you faithful. You, in other words, it's like this, because you believe, it's like putting in the time. That, that's, how many of you catching it, what I'm saying? In other words, if you work, you put in the time for your salary. If you believe, it's like putting in the time and you get it because you just believe. And so you got, it was counted like you put in the time. Does that make sense? So when you decide I'm believing, it's like you put in the time. Well, who put in it? Jesus put in the time. Jesus put in everything that he needed to give you everything that you could ever have. And, you, and because you said, yes, I believe, you got, you, it, it, you got it. It's like putting in the time. I don't know if that helps you, but, uh, but I was like, whoa. So when you say, I believe, all right, man, it's like putting in the time. You did it, but it really wasn't you. He, it was him. He did it. So it's like, faith is like working for free. <laughs> I don't know if that helps you, but anyway, all right. So being fully, 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 fully persuaded. I sound, I sound like my granddaughter, but fully persuaded. <laughs> By the way, I'm so glad my family's all here today. Praise the Lord. Anyway. Being fully persuaded, listen, it makes prayer exciting. It'll make prayer exciting. You can pray with authority. You can pray with fervency. All right, look at Romans chapter 4. This is out of the NIV. It says, without weakening in his faith, talking about Abraham, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. He wasn't denying it. He's looking at himself in the mirror. If he'd had one, maybe in the pond, he said, your body's dead, bro. Since he was about 100 years old, and he, he considered the Sarah's, Sarah's womb also dead. Yet, now notice, he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Verse 21, what was going on? Being fully persuaded. Being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. What was the persuasion in? That God was able to do what he promised. That's where Abraham was persuaded. God said, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And Abraham said, I believe it. He did the time. And God said, it's yours. <laughs> Amen. Fully persuaded. Think about that. Now, persuade, if you looked at the definition, to persuade means to convince. To convince. To agree, to believe, have confidence. It means to trust. So, when verse 21 says, fully persuaded, it's like, it's complete, it's full, you're assured. So being fully persuaded, you could say, is based on a relationship because Abraham is trusting God. He's faithful. Sarah did the same thing. Hebrews 11, 11 says she considered him faithful who had promised. She, she, she looked at the situation long enough, looked at God long enough, said, you're faithful. Hallelujah. So Abraham had a covenant with God. God comes down, establishes that covenant, that relationship. See, that covenant is what? A covenant is based on relationship. Do you know you have a relationship? Jesus came down, established covenant with his blood, made a relational covenant with us. And now we go, I believe. I get in on it. You follow me? So God took the initiative sent Jesus Christ down here to die for us and established a relationship with us. And everything that we have is based on that relationship. So your relationship now can grow and develop until you're fully persuaded in his character, in his integrity, and you trust him. Now, you know why Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, for the, for this, for, for the which cause I also suffer these things, why was, why was Paul able even to suffer things because of what I'm fixing to say? Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded. Everybody say, I'm persuaded. Listen to what Paul said. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I like what Paul said in Philippians. He said, he said, God, which be, I'm persuaded. He said, I'm confident that God, who began a good work in you, he's going to complete it right into the Philippian church. He said, I'm confident in this. I'm persuaded in this. And he says, I know in whom I have believed. See, that comes from a relationship. 
He's fully persuaded. So watch what happens. All right, get this and we'll wind this down. So because Abraham, God had, sets a covenant with him, speaks some things to his life, says you're going to be a father of many nations, what happens? Abraham changes his name at 99. Changes his name. He's fully persuaded. Now listen, if you're going to change your name from to father of many nations and you don't even have any kids, you, you persuaded are you here? Listen, you don't have any kids, and you're going to start telling everybody, your wife, everybody, your servants, everybody, Abraham, father of many nations. That's my name. Changes his name because he's fully persuaded. He's not trying to talk himself into it. He's convinced. Did you catch that? So let's sw- switch that. When you say, I'm blessed, do you say that because you're persuaded? I'm blessed. Abraham's blessing is upon my life. I'm of the seed of Abraham because I'm in Christ. I'm blessed. I'm healed. I'm righteous. I'm loved. I'm. Are you here? You see, you can say that out of just, oh, well, that's what the Bible says. I just say what the Bible says. <laughs> or you can say, you know, it's in my heart. Yeah. And the devil can beat me with a baseball bat till a greasy spot, and that greasy spot's gonna cry out, I'm blessed. <laughs> Amen. Not gonna change. I'm, watch me rise. Amen. Are you here? That's conviction. It's, it's easy. And Sarah, this was, a, this, was a, this was a marital thing going on here. This wasn't just Abraham. Sarah got it too. It says she, by faith, she received ability to conceive because she considered him faithful who had promised. So when you're, in a, when you're at the wall, you got to start looking how faithful is God. Start looking at what he's done for you. Has he ever failed you? Will he forsake you? Are you here? So it's easy, it's easy, it's real easy to see the cosmetics of somebody that's fully persuaded, but you don't, we don't see the heart. You see their persuasion. You see what they're doing, you go, and you, and you can try to imitate it. It's difficult to copy the actions without the conviction. I mean, it can be done, but you got to have the conviction. Does that make sense? We're, we are to imitate faith, but not necessarily actions. Actions won't always be the same. In other words, just because God tells somebody to do it this way, oh, you, oh, you, want, you, need, you, you need healing in your eyes, oh, smash your glasses, throw them away. Well, if you go try to do the same thing, God didn't tell you that. You're going to have some messed up glasses. You're going to have to go buy some new glasses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that, that's where people make mistakes. Well, they, well, they did it this way, or they, they, had, they, they had this testimony. Well, great. You, could, you might have the same one, but you might not. It may be different for you. Hallelujah. So the key is, we have to go after the word just like they did to get the conviction, the persuasion, all right? That's why meditation on the word, and we've talked about this before, is so important. Joshua 1.8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you might be careful to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. You will make your way prosperous. You have good success. So write this down. Don't forget it. Power to perform comes from exposure to the word. The t- subtitle this morning is exposure creates conviction. Power to perform. It's like your platform of response. When you've got it in you, you know how to respond. Power to perform comes from exposure to the word. You, you get so, that's what coming to church is all about. That's what staying in your connect groups and being a part and coming and coming and you get saturated and you hear and you get full of the word till you get, so, you get the exposure of it and now I got a conviction. I've got a persuasion. When the kids go, we don't want to go to church. You say, get up. Get your act together. We're going to church. This, this, is not a, this is not a democracy here. We're following the Lord Jesus Christ. This is kingdom stuff here. This is kingdom stuff here. Let me tell you something else. I was thinking about this. It's like, because I was thinking God, in the long, in the, along the lines of ministry, anointing, the calling of God, you know, with that calling comes certain assignments, certain giftings. And what happens is sometimes people like certain things and they go, well, I want that. Or they want those callings or they want those giftings. And there's certain giftings that go with the calling. And if you, are, if you weren't called along that way, then and some people are, are, are asking God for certain types of giftings, but it doesn't go with your calling. There are, there are giftings that I have. There's a call. That's why back to this church, this ministry, there is a world global call. And with that call, I guess I was thinking about 007 again. Because there, there are, 
with certain global assignments, the more global it is, sometimes the more secretive it is. Jesus, listen, what Jesus did was, was high class, uh, highly classified stuff. Nobody knew about it. Jesus was the only one, and it touched the world. So sometimes as we're doing what we're doing, the more global it is, God's going to keep it low key. He's not going to just tell everybody. And sometimes the assignments that you have, and then think about that, and the enemy catches wind of it, the more glo- Listen, if he can take out that one person, if he can take out that ministry, if he can take out that situation, he's going to go after that because it affects that global assignment. Are you here? So sometimes things are a lot bigger than you think they are. Amen? 007 don't talk to everybody. Anyway, all right, moving right along. So how do I get off on all that? Just conviction. Well, well, I was thinking about this. When you have that conviction, see, 1998, God spoke to my heart. I was on the floor. He said, I'm going to use you throughout the world. I was a youth pastor in a Methodist church. That's like telling me I'm going to go to the moon. 1988. What did I say? 98? 1988. Think about that. 1988, on my face, up in Wheeler, Canadian, Texas, little small town up there. Hadn't even been to Ramah yet. First full-time youth position, and God, I'm seeking him about something because there's a call, something he, I'm talking to him about, something that he's calling me. And he says, I'm going to use you throughout the world. Well, then later on down the road, watch what happens now. I, I know in my heart I'm supposed to go to Dubai. I need $8,000 like yesterday. I know I'm supposed to go. What are you going to do? What makes you go ahead and buy the ticket? What makes you go ahead and just work it out? And I'm not talking about money coming from here in order to get there. Are you here? I'm talking about because it's your assignment, you got to know when God says to go. you got to know what God says to do. And you're not looking at the bank account. Whatever you got to do, you just, you just like... You got a conviction, you have a persuasion, I'm supposed to be there. Sometimes there's meetings. There's meetings. I'm like, that I'm, that I'm connected, my camp, I'm supposed to. I mean, I had last fall, God dealt with me. You go get in that meeting. It was in Las Vegas. I've never been to Las Vegas. I, I've flown through Las Vegas. I've never been to Las Vegas. Man, I don't, I don't like going by myself to Las Vegas, and I got to work, you know, my way through there, you know. Anyway, it wasn't that difficult. But, but I went to that meeting. Say, what happened? I don't know. Actually, some good things happened. But there's things that you're supposed to get, things that God's doing, things that you pick up, things that God's needing. So anyway, I just said all that. You have have to know when God's dealing with you. So if he tells you, if you've got an assignment, things that you're supposed to do, deposits that you're making, all right? Let me wind this down. Hallelujah. Back to the Red Sea. Let me close. Everybody say the word builds conviction. No so. Back to that word, no so. You don't get that by listening to somebody else's story. Stories inspire. We can learn from stories. We can gain wisdom from stories. But you got to have your own story. I I said you got to have your own. Your own walk with God gives you your own story. And really, your life is just telling his story your way, how he's dealing with you, how he's wanting to flow through you. You got that? And you get that by having your own personal relationship with God. So, When you're facing the Red Sea, go to Exodus 14, and we'll wind this down right here. Exodus, the 14th chapter. Look right here. When you're facing the Red Sea, the impossible, the wall, what do you do? Reaffirm. Get before God. Reaffirm your persuasion, your conviction. What did God say? Has he ever failed you? What did he say? That's always a good thing to do when when you're in a situation. What does the word say? Watch what happens. Exodus 14, 10 says, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Ah! Listen, are they basing their actions on persuasion, on conviction? No. No, they're not, they're not persuaded that God's best, that God has their best interest. But he does. Think about that. God has their best there. He's like, man, I'm bringing you a land flow of milk and honey. I, I got somebody just for you. Right? Hallelujah. Verse 11, and they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us out, to, out here to die in the wilderness? Well, that was real nice, wasn't it? 
don't have no graves in Egypt. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Here, in other words, here we are, here we are, we're up against the wall. What are we going to do now? And so what happens, like the Israelites, a lot of Christians forget what God has done in the past up to that point. So don't ever forget. God never brings you to a point to forget you, dump you, and say, bye, I brought you fast. It's, only, it's as far as we go. Ha- have a nice day. <laughs> he didn't bring you to that point. Verse 13, and Moses said unto the people, fear ye not. Well, that's always, in, that's always the first thing you got to do. Don't fear. Fear ye not. Look at your neighbor say, fear ye not. Now look at this. Stand still. In other words, standing still will help you get your eyes on God. When you stop quit, I just got I, what I got to do. You know, you got to stand still. Just be still, be quiet, and look to heaven. Look to God and see the salvation of the Lord, Woo! which he will show to you today. For the, I like this part right here. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever the Lord shall fight for you, and you're going to hold your peace. In other words, you're just going to shut up, stop complaining, and the Lord's going to do the fighting. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 15, and the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they, what? Go forward. Move it or lose it. That's a good way to put it right there. Move it or lose it. Go forward. But lift up the rod and stretch out your hand over the sea, divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. In other words, the rod was what was used up to that point. In other words, it's like your faith. What have you been using to get to this point? What kind have you been using your authority? The same authority that got you to this point, you keep using. What you were doing, that persuasion that you had, keep using it. Don't stop, don't let it drop. God is saying, what got you to this point? Lift up, the, lift up the rod. Use your authority. Listen, Paul, the Apostle Paul, if you look at his life in the New Testament, he was always running into walls. He was, all, he was, let, he was getting let down from walls. I mean, he, he was always running into impossibilities. So what do we do when we hit those times? You seek the Lord for adjustments. Reaffirm your convictions. Reaffirm your persuasions. What do you believe? Because what you believe is going to be what you really do. What you really believe is going to be what you do. And then you move forward. And always keep this in mind. Sometimes delays are in our favor. Sometimes the delays are in our favor. God's always right on time. He's always on time. He's always on time. So, just make a little readjustment. What do you believe this morning? In some of these areas, when you're facing financially, Physically, moving forward. Listen, Mark 9, 23, Jesus said, all things are possible for those who believe. If you skip over to the 10th chapter, he said, with men, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. In other words, if you said, well, it just can't be fixed. It's just too far. It's broke. It's fixed. It can't be fixed. Well, with men... You're right. But with God, all things are possible. Yeah, I, I don't care if you go to the if you go to the greatest brain surgeon in the country, the, the, the most famous medical doctor on the planet, and he says, I'm sorry, but there's nothing we can do for you. It shouldn't shock you. You shouldn't go, oh. You should say, Well, I know somebody who can. Are you here? I know somebody who can fix it. He created the planets. He created the world. He created you. Hallelujah. Did you get something out of the message this morning? I'm just talking about your persuasion. Do you believe? Do you believe? All things are possible. So you just got to find that place of persuasion that gets you to where I got a substance on the inside that says, I'm I'm finna move forward. You got to be Brother Fitting Too. Y'all know who Brother Fitting Too is? You're fitting to move forward. Stand up. Come on, let's thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm moving forward. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm blessed coming in, going out. I'm breaking forth. 
I'm moving forward. God's Word is working in me. I believe the Word. And He sent His Word and healed me and delivered me, redeemed me, rescued me out of the pit, lifted me up out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock. And now my feet are like hind's feet. And I tread on high places. So I'm going up. Going up. I'm going up. I'm flying higher. And I wait on the Lord. And I get my persuasion. I hear from heaven. And I'm confident. I'm fully persuaded. That God is able to do. Exceedingly. Abundantly. Above. All. I could ever ask or even think according to that persuasions working in me lift your hands now and just thank him hallelujah thank you 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 Lord 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 come on say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me I can do it come on say it again I can do it I can make the changes that I need to make I can make the adjustments that I need to make. Woo! You might not feel like you can, but you can. You can be a better dad. You can be a better mom. You can be a better husband. You can be a better wife. I can be a better pastor. Praise the Lord. And we can all be wiser. <laughs> Amen. Whatever you do, you can do it better. Praise the Lord. You glad you came this morning? Go ahead and just woo a little bit. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Well, I preach myself happy. I'm feeling good now. Amen. You glad you came this morning? Well, all right. Well, don't forget, we've got kids in the back. So if you have kids that you got in the children's back there, you can exit that way. And the rest of it, just calm. Just not say calm. You can go radically if you want. Just make sure you keep your distance. Remember, we're social distancing. You're dismissed. Have a blessed day. Enjoy your Monday, Memorial Day off if you have off. You're dismissed. Bless you, everybody.